And my contribution to BOAS is enhanced social organization centered contribution to anthropology. I'll focus as announced on uh, what can be said out of the perspective of Boas's field notes and his work on Kwak Kwak Yolk music. And to that end, I'll um, take the already mentioned and referred to set of uh, research drawing from the Amenish as a starting point, uh, which uh, depict a mask uh, collected by Adrian Jacobson in 1882 for the Berlin Museum, most likely involving the Hunt family, if not George Hunt himself. Now, why did I take this picture? Because it's, I'm, as someone centered on uh, Boas's field notes, it depicts all different kinds of script that appear in the uh, Boas field notes as such. Here you find, uh, an, uh, aside from Latin script, which is uh, which shows in Quaquala, English and German notes, you'll find also notes in Old German and also notes in German shorthand. Among these, uh, the German shorthand notes were a particular challenge, and uh, as they um, relate to, to our project in multiple ways, it was a major issue to solve them, which I took on me. To make a long, long process short, um, I first had to identify the basic historic system, which hadn't been taught for over a century. Uh, then I had to decipher Boas's own version of it. The whole process took me over a year and a half, so you can imagine that I can talk much longer in it, but we'll just <laughs> stop it here. <laughs> um, as those um, notes on the drawings are not too uh, interesting, I'll just refer to a different example from our, from our exhibit. Um, some of you might have seen it, but I'll repeat it here for those who didn't. Uh, this example uh, relates to uh, Boas's description of the 1894 uh, winter ceremonial dances for Rupert, and um, the gain from being access from being able now to access this source for the first time is that we can now show who were Boas manipulated his notes in the process of producing the book. So what the comparison between the notes and the published version showed was that he simply, and we heard it already, omitted the fact that George Hunt, or didn't omit it, but he disguised the fact that George Hunt was the one who, who was the main organizer of the events described. Plus, he also deleted the fact that um, and the details about uh, George Hunt's non-native background. So these are two very important uh, points in making something more authentic out of a perspective back then. The other example that I would like to relate to is, uh, takes us uh, back to Boas's first trip to the Northwest Coast in 1886. And, um, and in this example here, he uh, collected a, a, a whole lot of masks, 13 of his, which he tried to sell to Berlin, uh, claiming that he was able to offer for all of them their native myths, making a distinction that he as a collector had more to offer than other collectors before, so he was a salesperson. So for me, uh, this took me as a challenge and I was looking for those myths and just to find out that there was only one a length, a lengthy miss ending up in Berlin, and now being able to access the original notes for the first time, I was able to compare uh, both the version in Berlin with the published version in the social organization with that and the um, in the original notes. And what came out was that he that both versions don't cover the total of what he had recorded. They both end at different spots. And they are presented as closed stories, whereas the version that he recorded back then was part of an um, ongoing uh, narrative with many, many episodes uh, connected to the genealogical background of the speaker. And here now, with those notes, we were able to identify who the speaker was. And in this sense, this example is uh, prototypical for what we want to do with our research, try to um, rever uh, reverse the process 
of uh, scientificating the knowledge that went into the book by looking by the sources behind it and identify the sole sources. So this is a very interesting example. Here's the original source, uh, source that ties it, and uh, it is the already named Khum uh, Nakhla chief. Um, I'm going back to the, to the drawings, and I show also um, not only different types of script, but also different layers of information. So at the most basic level, you find here uh, the notes on the mask given or rendered by, uh, by Berlin. And uh, they basically said uh, the outer face features a mythical creature. The inner face represents the Mesmasalane, whom the Belakula regard as their highest deity. Now, this is kind of weird um, for a mask that is supposed to be kwakwakiwak. And uh, here, it's really interesting to go back to the original ledger book and compare that entries with those on the object card. And here we find out that the original entry uh, doesn't say much. It basically says large black opening and oh, everyone can read. So uh, everyone uh, and, and the, the Bella Cooler reference is a secondary reference that is inserted on the object card. Now this is really important for us to also sh show and uh, reflect on where those sources come from because we know we heard already that the Bella Kula incident is already datable and this shows that the information that came back to, Berl uh, to New York was one that came from different sources and from different times. So, but why did Berlin provide that mixed information? If we go to the original one, we see it's very minimalistic. And this is the kind of information that was typical for the information by, provided by the already mentioned collector, Adrian Jacobson. So most of his descriptions are very um, purely descriptive and we can see where Boas's dissatisfaction or, uh, with, with Jacobson came from. And this also was the background why this information was meddled. Here you can see, going back to the Jacobson notes, that he visited Fort Rupert at different times and was, would record different information. On the first trip, he was able to collect native names for the objects he collected. He didn't do that on the second trip, this, which was the trip where he collected the object that was sent, uh, that was depicted here. Uh, what is also interesting was like in terms of where the information came from was valid. It turned out to be that what came from, not from the painter, uh, the already mentioned Grunwedel, but from Eduard Zeller, who became the first uh, All-American Collections Director of uh, Berlin. And uh, he turned out to be the second, his handwriting turned out to be the second most frequent on, American, on, on object cards pertaining to the Northwest Coast. Uh, which came as a shock, so to say, because I always expected Boas's handwriting to be much more present. Actually, uh, all of Boas's notes, or Boas, who is actually attributed or claimed to be somehow involved in the cataloging process, were pertaining to the third level uh, object cards, um, which are datable, all of them, to post-1893, showing um, that we have to rethink Boas's role in the cataloging and processing of the Jacobson collection in Berlin, which always was depicted as, a, as, as the starting point of going uh, where he went. Um, with that, I would like to give you a brief intro, uh, introduction on Boas's work on Northwest Coast music, which was which wasn't his first dealing with native music at all with, because it started in Baffinland. And it wasn't a work that he started on the Northwest Coast, but rather, as we heard already, in Berlin, uh, Germany. And so he published his first Northwest Coast publication even before he ever set a foot there, which is important. And the same is true also for his work on uh, Northwest Coast music, which began with uh, the publication of two uh, of his transcriptions in, in Karl Stumpf's uh, publication on Bella Kula music, which was rested on his own work uh, with the same group of Bella Kula or New Hulk in the neighboring city of Halle. And this is important as this was the, the second earliest publication on native music as such, 
only preceded by one by Theodore Baker, who published his PhD dissertation uh, on uh, different tribal musics from North America in the neighboring city of Leipzig at the University of Leipzig in 1882. Uh, with that, th this knowledge is really important to understand where uh, Boas's Boas interest in Kwakwakiwa music came from, and it is also interesting to um, understand or get a better feeling of why uh, of, of the main institutions uh, where the main institutions came from that hold the bulk of Kwakwakwak songs even today, which is the Berlin Phonogram Archive, uh, which was um, uh, opened in, in um, 1904 by no other but Karl Stumpf, and then the uh, Archives of Traditional Music, which was um, um, uh, which was introduced by the Berlin Phonograph Archive um, educated BOA student John Hon uh, uh, George Herzog in the 1930s and 40s. So we see this all ties in together. From this list, you see the impact of BOAs with regard to the uh, recording of Kwak Kwak Yuk music. Uh, but what this list doesn't say is who provided the singer, who organized the singer, and who provided the actual content and who actually provided the space to record in the first place, and that was George Hunt. So this is an important piece of information. And to honor his contribution, we have also included a song recorded of him in 19, uh, 1893 in our exhibition. We've heard already some of the basics um, of Boas's, uh, of, of, the, of the numbers of Boas's uh, work on music, so I don't have to repeat it over here. Um, and therefore, I would just like to skip that part and go on to different examples. Uh, the first one, first of all, I want to point to those songs. I'll just go back one more. First of all, I want to go to uh, point out those songs that are still, that have been recorded in 1893, but are still sung today, uh, which really um, show the dynamics and vitality and beauty uh, of Kwak Kwak Yuk music, and these are very important examples, and this, this is why three songs are included in, in the exhibition. Um, furthermore, I would like to point to um, a set of altogether 12 songs in the collection, uh, which is the only set of songs at all in the 1893 collection, and they pertain to the um, ceremonial uh, uh, cutting up of uh, red cedar bark at the beginning of the winter dance, which is like the most important or one of the most important events at the beginning of the ceremonial um, winter dance. Um, the interesting thing about those um, about this set is too that most of the songs were also recorded simultaneously. We heard already by uh, Ives Gilman. Uh, now, this is important because uh, Franz Boas, who worked with Fillmore and Fillmore and Gilman, uh, in the end stood for completely different approaches to native music. So, whereas Gilman took native music at face value, we find uh, Fillmore, who got his training in Berlin and Leipzig, uh, looking for um, uh, the um, uh, working for a global sense. Uh, um, Sorry, you got lost here. Um, universal sense of harmony, which he thought, of course, was best developed in European and less so in native music. This is now important because, because he came to uh, transcribe Kwak Kwak Yuk songs the way he treated uh, the transcriptions of uh, Alice Fletcher's Omaha songs. That is by correcting them in the process of transcribing them according to what he thought their uh, latent harmony was. Now, this was something that uh, didn't rest well with Boas, as a letter to his wife from Fort Rupert in 1894 suggests, I quote, today I corrected a few of the songs Fillmore wrote down in Chicago. Either the Indians sang very differently into the phonograph or he could not hear them well. I'm positive that I have written them down correctly now, 
and the difference between my rendering and his is immense, end of quote. So this also helps you to understand the processes behind the uh, production of the scores in the book. Um, with regard to the dating of Boas's, of Boas notes, our knowledge about his work, uh, his 1893 work on Kwak Kwak Yuk music is really important. And here you have to know that his work then did not only include the taking down of lyrics, but also the taking down of additional information. In the case of our Hamshapchat's mask, we also learn the name, different names of the owner, and also that the outer side is supposed to be a grizzly bear and the uh, inner side supposedly representing a Bachbakwalunuksiwe, which is a mythical creature important in Kwakwaka uh, Sermon. Um, so, Important too is uh, that the song for that mask was set was part of was part of a set of fifteen songs that had been sent to Berlin in 1897 uh, with songs referring to masks um, in Berlin. Most of them were unfortunately lost, uh, except one due to a misnaming. Um, Therefore, I want to go to another very interesting and complicated example, and this is a set of masks that Boas collected in 1886 in the village of Nwiri, Humdaspe. So this set was uh, also uh, acquired from aforementioned Chief Komunakla there, who told him that the whole set represented a mythical episode called the Feast of Raven. Um, now, the interesting thing is that it was uh, acquired in Nowiti and not for Rupert, as German records say, Berlin records say. Now, the most important thing is that Boas not only took down notes on the myth pertaining to that, myth, uh, to that mask, but also noted words to the song that Komunakala gave him, which is really interesting. And uh, I'm very thankful for Chief William Watson Jr. for translating the words to that song. Uh, With that, I would like to add also the last remarks of Bo uh, George Hunt's correction of 1920 and uh, some final remarks of the main drawing. And um, because this is what, what all shows about our project, that, that, that we are working on a collaborative project and taking the whole thing um, to the present and future. Thank you. Reiner, do you want to take one question before we go for a coffee break? We've got one here right in the I'm second row. I'm sorry, I know people want to yeah, take yeah. a break. But a question, why do you think that lines were drawn through? Oh. Was he, like, why Why were these lines being drawn through? Through the field notes. notes. Yeah. We, that, we know that. Um, we know that. Because the, the, they marked pages that he read through already, so he was uh, basically uh, stretching off or crossing off what he's, uh, or checking off what he's already... What he'd already sort of processed into right, okay. other manuscript forms. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay, anybody, any other questions about the music? Let's hold it to the end. Um, we'll have a 20-minute um, uh, coffee break and come back at uh, 10 minutes to 4. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.